It's been so long since I've done this. Dark Sean presents Jack London. Look at those big black eyes. Well, he looks professional enough. Right? All right, let's start off with his life. Now, firstly, here are a few things that I've got to mention here. Jack London himself is possibly the very first American celebrity who's actually a uh, first American writing celebrity, of course. And he's basically became the most, uh, the highest paid writer in America once. But let's just go ahead and dive down into his life. Also, I mentioned here, this is, if you are looking for dates, this is not your source. All right, let's get this started with. First off, Jack London was born on January 12th of 1876. Uh, that saying about me not saying any dates, that's a fib. I only say basically like a few dates that I actually find. Also today, we got a bunch of s stories and so I guess we'll have a few de dates to actually put in more than well. So he was born to a woman named Flora Wellman. And for some reason, every time I try to download the image, it just becomes like a question mark. So I just gave up. And took a screenshot and said, and she's basically married to this other random dude who actually people have, well, okay, we know his name, but I'm not going to tell you him, figure that out yourself, because we're still kind of having a little controversy over who this is. Also, people still technically don't know who his paternal, actual biological father is, because the house he was born in had a birth certificate, and it was burned down in 1906, which is when he was 30, so... Yeah, he would. Yeah, he, yeah. He never actually knew about who his what what happened to his father and all those things until like a few, until like a few years after he was born. So apparently, some sources say that there's a definite person, this guy named William Chaney. However, other people actually say that we will definitely never know because the birth certificate was destroyed. Anyways, uh, so if this person is actually Jack London's dad, then basically he and her basically was having a Jack London in her uterus, and he told her to go ahead and abort Jack London, and she refused, so he refused to take care of him, and then she almost went through gunshot suicide, which would have also killed him as well as her. A doctor came and treated her for, her for mental illness. Somehow she and him survived. He left the place of her and technically him, for Chicago. She died a few years afterward, and he just went ahead and was taken into custody by a black free wet nurse. And she did care for him. And so he just grew up and went ahead and became a good boy. Sort of. As a kid, he went ahead and went into a job of putting pickled pickles inside cans. Actually, bottles, actually, to be honest. Which earned him, drum roll please, 10 cents per hour. Meaning, if I do the calculations right. So let's see, so then, then we do 24, and then we have that by 365 days a year equals that. Divide that by 100, and you get, he gets $876 a year. What? Actually, oh yeah, he of course he doesn't work all that time, so he just goes ahead and like that, something like this, divide that by a hundred, and he earns three hundred and sixty dollars a year, ah. Huh? But in a few months, he basically just earns nothing but a hundred dollars, and of course, uh, while he gets ten cents, he just has to go ahead and spend it all on expenses and everything. In his free time, Jack was a big. And loved to idle his time away at the public library where he could like borrow books for free and read them all. And some of those stories characters we find and from his real experiences we find in his later fictional works. And after a while of 10 cents per hour pickling bottles, sorry, putting pickled stuff into bottles, he read a book and literally found out how much you can get by basically going ahead and, well, poaching clams. Basically, he became a poaching clown pirate. And suddenly, he found in his pockets a lot more money than that he can have at once than like a few months of his previous job. So he sold all the pickled clams and tried going ahead and having more and more poaching. However, his sailboat fell into disrepair, too expensive for him to fix. And so he quit the pirate life. And was ironically given a job of busting poaching, like a, a part of the San Francisco police, to go ahead and catch people who actually poach clams. 
However, he still couldn't scrape up a living, so when he heard about that there was a gold rush in Alaska, he joined the frenzy. And went there to and actually tried to expect at least a bar of gold. But instead found something even better. A brain almost jam-packed with more stories than he can remember. Using that wealth of ideas, and his own experiences in poverty, why else would he have pickled, put pickled stuff into bottles? And he used that big brain of his to write, a, to write a bunch of short stories. He entered a competition, and he basically won first prize, which was $100. A lot of money for the 19th century, late 19th century. And then, of course, he started writing his own novels. And he went ahead and wrote one of the most famous ones ever, The Call of the Wild. Where basically there's this uh, domesticated dog named Buck, and he just goes ahead and turns into a wild wolf. Oh yeah, and even has his own little family. Which was published in 1903 in the newspaper and McCollins. And basically, they, McCollins basically went on a bunch of expensive advertising. Which ended up with the book fully sold out. Oh yeah, and it was turned into a movie in 2020. I give it 5 stars. Out of 5 stars. Then, he wrote a basically a kind of companion novel to this called The Sea Wolf, which was published the following year. And then, finally, he basically wrote White Fang, which was published in 1906. And to be honest, I think this one actually pairs better with The Call of the Wild than this could. And with that, we actually have a really good story, too, where this one, basically, a wolf becomes domesticated. And yes, the wolf's name really is White Fang. Shine. However, basically, he went ahead and went through a bunch of alcohol abuse. Or he drank too much. He married two times. The first one, he, he basically had two daughters, but the marriage was strained, so he just quit his first marriage, divorced his first marriage. And then his second marriage was... His second marriage to the second wife that he's ever loved, second person he's actually ever loved, a uh, third woman he's ever, ever loved. Basically, he just went ahead and married this woman named Charmian Kittredge in 1905, two years after Call of the Wild was published. And they went ahead, and basically, they were inseparable. They tried to get a child. First time, it, they, the first time the child died in infancy, and the second time, basically, well... Well, the first time the child was still born, and the second time it was miscarried, the, the pregnancy, so they just gave up. Jack bought a ranch, who, which he intended to go ahead and actually become an actual ranch, but then it got burned down, and it was never repaired. And then, possibly by a bunch of experts saying, has a con- like, uh, drinking too much probably is a little factor, he died of gastrointestinal uremic poisoning. Also, some people still speculate and rumor that it was actually suicide that went ahead and killed Jack London because he talked a lot about suicide in his memoir. But whatever the case, but whatever the case, sorry, someone just called. But whatever the case was, whether he was just suicide, most people actually agree that the most uh, most plausible death was gastrointestinal uremic poisoning. He was cremated and buried here, and his wife, Charion Kittredge, survived him until 1955, and then she was also cremated here. So they just sit next to each other, yay. He died in November 2nd of 1916, at the age of 40. What a very short life, even for a 20th century of her lifetime. So that's it, that's the story of Jack London. And today, he's actually most known for this story. Call of the Wild. Sure, it makes a pretty good movie. However, most people actually just go ahead and ignore it because it's put in the classic section and people want to read new books. However, people should read this book because it is a classic. It's something worth reading. However, I'm actually sad that most people, like a bunch of modern people, actually skip this book in the libraries. It's a really good book, too. And if you like nature and having a little connection with it, then I highly recommend this book, too. I made a review of it on this channel. And the only reason why I'm making this video is because I'm actually going to make a review of White Fang. So that's it. Hope to see you guys soon. Until next time, sun out. Peace. Bye. Oh yeah, and please, wear a helmet. Straps on. Better safe than sorry. See you guys soon. Sun out. Peace. Bye-bye.